Good afternoon, everybody. The time is now one o'clock, and I call the special meeting of the Conroe ISD School Health Advisory Council to order. Thank you all for joining us today on this election day on, and on the day that many of you may have some kiddos at home because uh, they're at home with you guys today. So with that in mind, uh, we'll move to the agenda as quickly as possible. Uh, the first item on the agenda is considered the approval of minutes. So the minutes of the October 11th meeting were distributed prior to today's meeting. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Um, yeah, wait, I just have a question. Last month was my first shack. Who is the other co-chair? So, oh, did you catch that, Garrett? Did y'all catch that? Yeah, so the question is, we voted on a co-chair where, and there's implication that there's another co-chair on the shack. So I'm just, because we called Rice as the co-chair, right? Yes, so Dr. Spear. I guess I have a question of who is the other co-chair? I am the other co-chair. Did we vote on you? We didn't vote on you, right? <laughs> no, I've been appointed to this position. So we have one district co-chair and then we have a, a parent co-chair. This is Christina Keller. I just, um, that actually is not, pop I mean, I think we need to talk about this because it specifically states in uh, 28.004 that it should be a parent. And then in the guidelines provided by the state, the SHAT guide, it specifically outlines that it cannot be an employee of the district. Um, and I, I can put that in the chat. If, if we have a chat feature, um, I can put those references there. Yeah, you know, I, I look too, and there's not a requirement to have a co-chair. It says, you know, the, the requirements say chair or co-chair. Um, so we don't have to have two co-chairs. Uh, Dr. Upshaw, Dr. Winkler, anybody want to make a comment on that? One thing we can note it um, and have a conversation. I know that that's one of the things that we had talked about being a conversation about the membership of the shack and how it's structured. I think all these points are are well taken. Um, and we can note that conversations on that subcommittee that I think Ms. Spear is going to have um, us call for membership for that. Um, and we can discuss that. Yeah, I, this I just is think, April. Can you can you help us understand what the discussion would be? Because I'm not sure I understand the issue with. I mean, we're we're governed by 28004. So can you help us understand that perspective? So when I look at the I look at the Texas documents that you're mentioning, the this is a recommendation. And so when I read what you're mentioning, it says that we can either have a co-chair or the chair be a parent. So it really could be us that decides as a SHAC committee who has the membership. Of, of helping us run the what we accomplish here. I do think our, our whole intent was not to not um, interpret the law the way that it's written. It's really to, you know, there's a partnership between our parents, right? There's the piece that we wanna make sure that we, we honor the guidance of the curriculum with our parent and our community, but as well, we need someone in our district that can help make sure that those uh, things that we put in place happen, which would be wait. So that's something that we just have considered, but we can, we can have that discussion. And that's my, and that was my thing is, is we never voted on Wade being a co-chair. We voted on Dr. Spear. So, you know, by default, she's really the chair because there was no vote for Wade. So the Shack committee recommends the committee and then the board votes on the committee. Shelly, could you kind of help with that? You had done that item before in the past with us. So who puts the SHAC members in place is the School Board of Education. Yeah, we I had, you know, um, I just because we have done things in the past a certain way does certainly not mean if we have been doing it wrong, we want to keep doing it wrong at all. Um, so I think it's a good discussion. I was actually thumbing through the, um, the SHAC guidelines. And so, um, you know, I think it's, you know, definitely a point for discussion, but um, I just, I, you know, I'm not a voting member, but if I were a voting member, I, just, I would want some clarity on that. So that's why I was kind of thumbing through to see if I could find some clarity, not just in the law, but within, there's the um, school health advisory um, handbook. 
that uh, I don't know if anyone has um, that, but that's what I was thumbing through to kind of get some clarity on that. Yeah, and I guess um, this is April here, but just to clarify, we're not asking about who the members are. That's very clear. I think I think there is understanding that the board of trustees are the ones who appoint the members. We're talking about the leadership within the appointed membership that's already been done. So we're only talking about the chair, co-chair position. Yeah. And I, I think I was, the language is very clear that that is meant to be a parent. That's what I was, uh, that's what I was looking for on the clarity. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I agree with April, but, you know, even if it was, wait, there was no vote, right? And you know, he was assigned by the school to be coach. Well, that's not how it, this whole thing is designed because technically then Dr. Spear could have been assigned by the district. Why would we even vote for her to be co-chair? So, you know, we can't have it one way for one co-chair and the other way for another co-chair. I think we should just be consistent on how we handle that. I mean, look at the screen. Does anybody disagree that that's clear? clear? This is from the school health advisory, um, it's called the Shack Guide for Texas School Districts. I mean, it's pretty clear to me it should be a parent and it doesn't have to have a co-chair. It says chair or co-chair must be a parent of a student enrolled and cannot be an employee of the school district. I just, I don't, I don't know where we would get more clarity than that. And, and so my whole thing with raising the objection for the minutes was just to add clarity to those minutes that Bryce was the only one nominated as co-chair. By default, she's chair because we did not vote on any other co-chair. So just to add clarity to those minutes is, is what, you know, th this whole thing started because anybody asked if, I think Wade asked if if we had a chance to review the minutes and are, are there any issues with the minutes? And I just am raising this because I think there should be some clarification there. So I'm thinking kind of just what, what you're sharing with us, maybe something we ought to consider as a role that maybe Wade would, or Mr. Haymark would be more of a facilitator to help the co-chair through the process. I see some nods on the panel. You're tiny on my screen, <laughs> but it would be more to serve as that role. And if we want to then have um, discuss with membership or members of the role, see if we want to have one chair or two co-chairs, because I do think that we could then outline that, outline that in our bylaws, like what the role is of Mr. Haymark on the committee and what the role is of the parent positions to help us facilitate this process. This is all good points for us as we, as we roll through this, like we've, like we've probably mentioned before, the more that we grow together in this, we, against, we did not mean to not uh, interpret the intent of the law. We're doing this together with you as a partnership. So we can note that and then um, discuss this with our membership group, if we have one. Yeah, because I mean, Wade is a facilitator. Um, you know, I mean, we need a liaison, between, or I probably pronounced it wrong, but we need somebody to go to between the shack committee and the school and Wade's a, he's, he's the man for that, right? Um, so it's just a clarification on the minutes. As of now, we've only voted for one chair or co-chair. We haven't, we haven't voted anyone else. So um, anyway, I just think those minutes need clarified. Hey, Edith, I think what you said is, is exactly right. I think Wade is the perfect person to serve as that liaison between the shack and the district. And so he has the experience, he knows exactly how this works and being in a facilitator role, I think would be great. And we would, I think that would be a great fit. Agreed. We can amend the minutes. I, I'm trying to see if uh, Sam, are you on the call? Yep, I'm here. Okay, I'm sorry. Sam, Sam's our secretary guys for a review. Are you, you have that down Sam? Or I can get with you on that also. We can uh, amend the minutes. The minutes that are sent are draft minutes uh, minutes anyway, so we can't amend them. So we can add that to it before we send okay. the final out. I, I think it needs to be noted that, you know, Wade is following the directive of what his job scope is. I think that needs to be noted. So if there's a concern with him serving or being represented, he's following a directive. 
So that's beyond what his job is, right? That's someone above him. So I think that needs to be in the fold that if you're going to want to document it, you need to document how he's being whole, held accountable for his job performance and that he's here to represent Conroe ISD. And one of the jobs is him facilitating these meetings, be it an ombudsman, a liaison, whatever the terminology is. But I think that's just fair to put it that he's following what his job is requiring him to do, like we all do. Oh, yeah. Wade, I think you're doing a great job facilitating these. So, you know, I watched him last year on YouTube and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I think just clarification on that. But, yeah, thanks, Wade. You're doing great. Thank you. All right. So we've noted those corrections. Any other corrections at this time from the October 11th meeting? Um, hey, Wade, I just wanted to um, just highlight that when we talked about the human sexuality presentation, that there was um, parent sentiment expressed of not having um, abstinence be the primary focus of that. Um, I didn't see comments about that. And then also my question about um, if a student asks, when does life begin? And then the, the response of the teacher should be, ask your parents. I think that's a, a really important part. Um, especially given um, the the concerns that parents have about human sexuality instruction in the schools. Okay, so do we want to add that to the minutes? In the last meeting. And again, we're going through the minutes. You know, I was trying to take minutes as best I could the last meeting as well, and I went through. And then with the way the mics were set, I was having a difficult time hearing everybody as well. So we got them as accurate as we could. But if that's something you picked on, Dr. Spear, we can uh, add that to the minutes as well. Yeah, I'm happy to edit them too. I don't ever want to overstep um, at all. I, I see my role on this committee, you know, as in the position that I am as one that helps um, serve alongside other committee members. And so I don't ever want to be in a position where I'm taking, um, you know, inappropriate leisure or leeway on a topic um, and not following the rules that everyone else has to follow. So that's why I present my concerns in the same way that we would expect everyone else on the committee to, to present them. Ms. Twerk, you have those? Yes, I know. Okay. All right, know. thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if there are no further corrections, I'll call for a motion to vote for the approval of the October 11th meeting minutes. And while I'm thinking about it, guys, if y'all don't mind, at some point, will you please sign in using the chat feature? I apologize for not saying that right away. But at some point, will you sign in to use uh, to the meeting using the chat feature so we can get a, get a roster of who's here with us today? Okay, do we have a motion to vote? And please state your name. A motion to vote. I'll motion, make a motion to vote. Okay. To approve the minutes. All right. Dr. Spear, do we have a second? April 2nd. I didn't catch that one. April Kersey can second. Laura Prosti. All right. Please vote using the chat feature, guys. It's, uh, it wrote, simply type in yes if you approve and put no if you do not approve the minutes. Yes if you approve, no if you do not approve. I'll monitor or Dr. Spear, if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see it so far. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, with the changes. Yeah, Garrett, I um, saw that. With the changes, yeah. we'll amend that. So, yeah, I think the assumption is we move forward with the um, the changes. And um, I'm so sorry, um, I did not see that we have a hand raised on, um, on the members. Um, Mrs. Bingham has a question, I think. Do you still have a question? I see the hand raised for you. Uh, no, Ms. Bingham hit the wrong button. Sorry, Brian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, okay, so I see, um, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I see 11 votes in the chat and um, there are, in, there are yes noted with noted changes. So I think the consensus is yes with the changes. Okay. 
All right, President Gallagher's initiative, October 11th meeting are approved. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So um, one thing, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt? Yeah. So um, I, I I was flipping through and I, I don't want to like totally read it because I, I don't want to not be engaged in the meeting. So um, but one of the things and I, I wait, I'm not sure if you sent it out. Um, this guide, um, if we if there are members that haven't seen this, um, maybe we could send it out, you know, to the members just to um, not um, supplant the, the law, but to, you know, help with further understanding because there's some really good stuff on like making change as a committee. And I think everybody here is really committed to that. Um, and, um, you know, making sure that vision and everything is there and it has some really good checklists and things like that. So this might be a, a helpful document for the committee. And Dr. I, Unger, I, thought, just, I thought I'd send it out to most everybody, but I did I not. Thought I thought you did, but I just okay. wanted to double check. You're talking, just so I make sure I'm on the same page, Dr. Winkler, you're talking about um, the Texas Department of State Health Service Services Guide for Shacks. Yes, um, it looks okay, like this. yes, yeah, yes, I have that. Yes, okay. Yes. I just want to make yeah, sure the whole committee it's an had excellent it. Excellent resource. It's got some really, really good stuff in there, yeah. and um, you know, I think we can all agree we want to make sure this is a really, um, you know, high functioning committee, and and that we have all the rules in place. And this just might be another document that would help us with that, or help y'all with that. I think Miss Keller. Thank you, Christina. You put it in the chat for us for the link. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on. Anybody else on the minutes or comments? Okay, um, moving on to agenda, agenda item three, consider updates and approval of parent consent opt-in procedure and forms. Um, at the 11 October meeting, we tabled the opt-in consent forms for um, reconsideration and adjustment. Our committee, our subcommittee met um, October 24th. Um, we uploaded the original documents and uh, proposed change documents to a Google Drive. All of the subcommittee members had access to the, the Google Drive and could make changes as they um, saw appropriate. And then that was all prior to the meeting. And then the day of the meeting, we met in, um, on the big screen in the Jet Center, I think is what it's called. Um, we went through those documents. Um, I believe Wade is going to screen share so you can see them. Um, and we can go over the changes. So we had a little bit more feedback um, since the meeting after the forms were sent out um, to the full SHAC committee. Um, and again, we welcome all feedback, comments, concerns so that we are all in consensus. Um, we're gonna go ahead and show those. Um, yeah, I can do I can do one at a time. That is, this was the last okay. minute. You want the, the sure. most recent with the requested edits? Yeah, with the requested edits, I think that's... Can everybody see them? Okay, if you can't, because we lose um, y'all's faces, um, just feel free to speak up at any time. Um, this is the parent consent regarding health, human growth and development instruction for grades five and six. You'll see it looks different than the one that we had on previously. Um, we have um, outlined where the policies come from, the links to the Texas Education Code, um, added the description of content, there's also direct links for the videos. Um, the parents could um, write, you know, insert onto the internet and look at the videos. These videos are also posted on the health, um, the physical education and health portion of the CISD website. Um, and then there's additional language to show that the instructor shows the, the students the videos at the links above and no additional instruction on these topics will be provided. Um, instructors will direct students to talk to their parent or guardian should they have any questions about the material and that the SHAC um, has reviewed and recommended this cur curriculum and that's been approved by the Board of Trustees. Um, we're listing parents' rights for grievance process should a parent have one. And then at the bottom, we have the parents have the choice to give permission or to not give permission. Um, and a little bit of background on that, we felt like it was important to have both options there, even though the default is is to not opt in, because when you just put one choice on there, it, it draws the question, where's the other choice? So um, this is the form for the fifth and sixth growth and development um, curriculum that will be shared in, at the intermediate um, level schools. And then you'll see when we go through the other ones, we don't, I don't, unless you want me to read all of them through, I'm happy to do that too, but you'll see a lot of similarities um, with accessing the curriculum materials, the grievance process, the consent, 
obviously the description of content changes, but then the legal parameters on why the decisions were made to create the form the way that it is are referenced at the top of the page. Anyone have any comments or concerns or feedback or suggestions um, about the form? I, I do. This is William Kelly. I'm the headmaster for the academy, and um, I was not able to attend the last meeting, so I don't know what the discussion was about the, the red um, changes, but as an instructional leader, this is it, these videos, I, I watched them and I watched the PowerPoint. A lot of that content overlaps stuff that is in the health teaks and is in the health textbook. And to say that no additional instruction on these topics will be provided, you're kind of setting up a, um, a catch-22. Um, some of this will already have been discussed in prior, prior chapters, like um, drug use or um, at or some of those things. So to say that we're just going to show the video, but none of those topics will come up ever again in class. Um, I don't. I don't know that that's possible. It's. It's. You might be setting up um, a, an impossible situation for a health teacher. Mr. Kelly, I. You know, I asked the question la on the last meeting. Is this all they teach off of these slides? And the response was yes. Is that not true? I mean, no, are they I, also teaching? The, off <clears throat> I think on that things? day, I think those slides and those videos are probably the only thing that is presented on that day. But there are references in those slides to like drug use. Well, um, if I may interject, this is April Kersey. The, the specific consent form that we're discussing here mm -hmm. is the human growth and development. So there's no discussion. And if you look under the description of content, this is only about puberty. These are specifically the videos, no additional slides, and there's no reference to drug use or other topics. So it's a very specific topic, set of topics that's being discussed. Well, well, if, if we go back to number four, the importance of staying healthy, including eating properly, exercising, inadequate sleep, hygiene I suggestions. I mean, I, I think that might go beyond human sexuality. Right. I mean, if we're talking about eating properly and we're only going to discuss it based on these slides, I, I don't think that's true. Um, so just to clarify, these are just the videos there. I don't from my understanding for five and six, we were told last meeting that it's only the video on human sexuality, no additional materials or slides. I was just wondering, because number four is this topics covered in the videos include. And um, I just I don't want someone to feel like. We, the video talked about staying healthy, so I can never discuss that again. <clears throat> right. I think I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying, sir. Um, and I see, I see the dilemma. I think the the comments from the other members, you know, these this form in particular is just for those two videos, and then at the bottom it has the date. You know, your student is scheduled to receive instruction on this date um, and then the, the deadline to reply by. Um, however, I think that, you know, the concerns that you're bringing forth are, are valid. And if the state of Texas is declaring that this content is something a parent needs to opt into, then perhaps we need to look at additional sources of content that the students may be, um, be exposed to. Because if the state's saying parents have to opt into this, then it really isn't appropriate for there to be other conversations or topics occurring um, in parallel to these outside of the state, unless the parent has has opted into that as well. But I want to just clarify curriculum wise, just to kind of help perspective. So this specific topic addressed by this is the video that kids have to, the parents have to opt in to have their child taken from the class to go have the subject. What you're referring to, Mr. Kelly, would probably be like when the, the PE teacher goes over the healthy diet the wool foods and the slow foods, like don't eat too much chocolate. That's right. another part of the curriculum. Do you kind of see what I'm saying? It, it, yes. I don't, yes. So that's what I think we have to very clearly clarify for parents is that you're opting in for your child to learn about the, this specific portion of the curriculum. There are more, there is other curriculum, like in the PE curriculum that right. it does. You talk to kids about, you got to drink water, you know, right. that kind of stuff. And so I don't want us to blur the line because right. I, that it's very delineated in, in this whole process for us as a district. 
Um, so I just wanted to make sure I clarified that for our, our group. I think it may alleviate some of his concerns because it does say no additional instruction on these topics, but then it does specify four topics. One, which is very commonly covered in, in health class with eating healthy, staying healthy. Maybe if we just change that language to no additional instruction on human growth and development or, or something to kind of specify would make more sense. Yeah. Um, uh, Aaron, I'm open to that. I was the one yeah. that originally suggested this. So yeah, I, if that allows you to talk about eating healthy and better sleep habits multiple times, but only talk about human sexuality or human growth and development with these videos, then I'm fine with that. Sure. So should, um, no additional instruction on topics. Um, do we reference them by number? Do you think, or what would be the clearest to delineate? Were you the just concern? suggesting to say no additional instruction regarding human growth and development will be provided? Um, I don't know how it's set up under takes I me, mean, Mr. Kelly, do you have a, a strong opinion? Oh, I don't, I don't have, I don't have the teaks um, directly in front of me. Um, and I, under, I definitely understand the concern, right? I mean, when we get to this very specific topic about puberty and sexuality, we do want students to go to their parents, right? Outside of, even if they view this video, follow-ups should be at home. But when I'm a former English teacher, so I'm very specific about words. And, um, and so when we say, Human growth and development, I do think that includes all of topic four, right? And some of topic three, because in PE class, we are going to talk to them about wearing deodorant. Um, it, it's important. And, uh, but I do understand like topics one and two. And then um, I, I know it doesn't say sexuality in any of those four topics, but I know that's, I know the intent. I just don't want the words to be so restrictive that it it blurs the intent and um, and causes confusion or frustration for a PE teacher who feels like now they're getting in trouble because they're talking about whoa and go foods. So if we if we called out by number and left out number four, for example, and said no additional instruction on physical changes associated with puberty, hormone changes, I guess hygiene suggestions you had suggested maybe that wouldn't work because of deodorant. Um, well, I don't, I mean, as parents, where, where is the line in those listed topics? Where's the line where you feel comfortable? Oh, the PE teacher is going to mention this to them. And where is the line of our intent we pull them out, like Dr. Upshaw said, for this very specific topic about their body changing and hormone changing and sexuality and, 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 and all of that. And we definitely want that to be over here under this form. But when we add that red line, we're now saying everything discussed in here can't be discussed beyond this moment. And so I, I want y'all, you, to feel comfortable drawing that line so that it's very clear to teachers what can and can't be talked about. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know um, how, I know the intent is to be specific, but the more specific you get, th then you have to start talking about, well, what is hygiene I can't discuss and hygiene I can't discuss. Well, Mr. Kelly, you know, as a parent, I'm, I get concerned about, uh, you know, a, a stray, somebody can go off topic. And, you know, I looked at the videos, I watched them, you know, when my kids get to be fifth or sixth grade, I'm okay with that. But I do not want a teacher expanding the, you know, some of the cultural beliefs that are prevalent out there. You know, I think we really do have to put some limits on here. So, you know, if the, if the wording is tweaked a little bit, I'm, I might be okay with that, but, you know, I want to put some restrictions on this and not just have it as a free for all either. 
But I guess, Mr. Kelly, uh, back on the point of this form. So, for example, when a teacher talks to my child about deodorant, I don't have to, as a parent, sign an opt-in form. So there's a very clear distinction within the district and within, um, I guess, Texas legislature that says you have to opt in for this specific type of instruction. Right? Well, there's a, there is a form to view these videos, right? Now, in the video, though, some very generic topics are brought up. So when we say that no instruction beyond this, or if it's mentioned, um, you are kind of you are kind of reaching out and grabbing other teaks that don't require an opt in. But I guess the the purpose of this form is regarding opt in related material. We are not currently having to opt in for discussions on slow and and go foods or deodorant. So the nature of this form in and of itself is regarding topics that are more sensitive and require parental approval. So perhaps what perhaps what you just said is the perfect wording for that. Yeah. Right? So you just said the instructor will show the students the videos and no additional instruction on topics requiring parental opting in will um, will be covered and students will be directed to their parents. Could we just reference the 28.004? Because that's where we start at the top talking about that. Maybe we just say in reference to the Texas education. I mean, I don't know. I, I think, um, Mr. Kelly, I think that and what you and um, Ms. Kersey were talking about, I think that that language is good. No additional instruction. And we can even... Um, so it, I'm not sure how much space is left on the page to make sure this all stays on one page, but I mean, we could even, we could even just say on these opt-in topics, because this is an opt-in form. Um, and, and then that, that way, it, might yeah, be that way it's yeah. both. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine so maybe, with that. And I think it would give you as a teacher, the latitude to talk about topics that you're currently talking about, like you said, deodorant and eating healthy and all these other topics that may come up in various different settings, but with these more sensitive topics, um, it just clarifies for parents and gives them the assurance that this is the video only and there's no additional instruction provided. So I'm okay with adding in the, the language on these opt-in, you know, parent opt-in topics. Yeah, I think that that provides a little more clarity to the, to the teachers in the room um, and to teachers outside of that room who do have to cover some of these other topics, but you don't have to opt in to talking about deodorant. Right. Yeah. Wade, Thank do you, you want to make much. the edits real time so that we're just all agreeing on the, the specific verbiage? Or whoever has this, I think it's Wade's, right? The screen. Wade, are you muted? Yeah, I'm on it. So. How about on these topics requiring parental? Opt in. I'm fine with that. Okay. Maybe does it? No additional instruction on these topics requiring a parental opt in will be provided. Make sense? Sound good? Yeah. Appreciate that perspective, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Thank you very much for bringing that forward. Okay. I just ready to move on. Or you want to? Yeah, no, let's go to the next. Let's go to the next one. Oh, hang on. So. Okay. Um, my screen didn't change yet. Unless it's. Parental consent. Oh, hang on. I, I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Stop sharing and reshare. Mine's pause as well. Oh, okay. All right. This is a uh, child abuse, family violence, dating violence, human trafficking instruction, grade six. Can you see that? Yes, I can see oh, it. Okay. Um, thank you. 
Um, so you'll see a, a similar layout on this form as, as the one we just reviewed. Um, it shows the legal statute statutes requiring um, us to take action and put, you know, inform parents. Um, there's a description of content, uh, the curriculum materials, including a link to the website, to our CISD website, where parents can access um, uh, the curriculum materials. And then again, this, this statement, the instructor will, instructor will utilize the materials posted at the link above um, and no additional instruction. I think we probably should just already add um, get the discussion we just had that seems logical for this form as well, um, that no additional instruction on topics requiring parental opt-in. Um, instructors will direct students to talk to their parents. The grievance process is listed there. It is the same or is intended to be the same language as, as all of the forms. Um, and then the consent portion is the same, except for the I do and the I do not. Um, the language is changed to reflect prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and human trafficking. Any comments, concerns, questions? Uh, that just needs to be opt in. It's, yeah. And then yeah. the title, um, the very top requiring, yeah, we just need to take that out. No, I think you were, it should start with parent consent. I think when you were trying to type in earlier, it went to the wrong. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. All right. Um, if no comments or feedback, we'll go on to the, the third one. We by no means are rushing through these. So if someone is struggling to unmute themselves, just speak out anytime. We want feedback from everybody. Um, yeah. All right. So this is the parent consent related to the prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and human trafficking instruction for grades eight through 12. Again, the same um, format of the letter, the description of content, the curriculum materials. Um, we can amend the statement. So we have the opt-in uh, portion uh, under, mm -hmm, under the topics, the grievance process and the consent. And then, um, You'll see I do and I do not give permission. Both have red letter changes because the form hadn't been updated um, from the language with the human sexuality training. So um, it just was changed to make sure that it matches the, the top title of the form. All right. Anything? Okay, and then the next one. All right. Um, that wasn't a correct one. I'm trying to find. I think it's here. Okay, um, so here's the consent instruction related to uh, human sexuality, reproductive health from grades eight through 12, same format, um, you know, same, same language with the exception of just moving around um, the, the wording to make sure it matches the intent of the consent, if that makes sense. Um, but really, I mean, we, they're all the same format. They just, the plug and play parts are um, adjusted to make sure it's covering the topic that's being discussed on the day of instruction. You know, Bryce, I don't know if the normal parent understands that opt out change to opt in this year. Mm -hmm. Do you think it makes sense just to make, and I was rereading the top one, we don't really state that either. Does it make sense just to kind of try and help them navigate it that we like underline and bold that your student will not be permitted since that is a big change for this year? Sure. Yeah, we, you know, I'm glad you, um, brought this up because it does echo a conversation we had at the subcommittee meeting. We, um, some of the other members that were there, you know, can chime in too, but we just really kind of went back and forth on what was the best way to make sure that we had consent from parents, um, but 
you know, didn't cause any additional confusion because it is different this year. So I, I think that's definitely well received and, and good feedback. So thank you. And we've instructed all the health teachers as well. We met beginning of the year this fall. Again, this came out very fast in August. And so, and we really went through all this as well, just to let them know when they, you know, when they discuss this with their students and their parents, that they talk about the changes. And I think that was part of the reason why the last meeting, we wanted to be sure that we shared all the information because it is a new procedure. And in doing so, we were able to explain to the shack what these new opt-in procedures were as well. So, um, and again, we'll do this again in the spring. I'll meet with them in the spring. And I will also, you know, clarify with them that there's a change to it, that, you know, these forms do go out to all and it is an opt-in if they receive instruction. Yeah, awesome. I think especially for parents who maybe had a kid a little older, an older sibling, that they might just think, oh, I don't need to sign it if I want to do it. So maybe if we underline in bold under the second highlight, your student will be will not be permitted to participate just to kind of help them navigate what the form's for. Sure. I think that sounds reasonable. Yeah, I agree. I have an older kid and I would have missed that if I hadn't looked at it closely. Um, Aaron, which part do you want to underline? You're saying the underline your student will not be permitted that underline that one, two, three, those six words. Maybe just will not. I mean, we don't need to go. Will not. Okay. <laughs> Rice. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. mm -hmm. I think that's perfect. And then here as well. We do not receive your consent. It will not. Okay. And we'll go back and change the rest of them as well. Sure. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We appreciate the feedback. Any other things or, or thoughts um, from anybody? Okay. Um, all right. So every, so we're assuming that these forms are good to go. Um, after with those changes that we just talked about. Um, now, I know I'm going to ask Dr. Upshaw quickly. I know that um, at the subcommittee meeting, um, you had brought forward a concern about the language and regarding to approving or not approving voting, not voting. So do you want to chime in on um, these forms and, um, you know, the expectation with the SHAC um, for, for our role with them um, so that everybody's on the same page? Not to put you on the spot, Dr. Upshaw, sorry. It's okay. We were we had just kind of had a discussion about when we looked at um, 28004. I want to make sure I say that right, Ms. Keller. <laughs> you know, um, the SHAC committee recommends the processes and procedures in the district. And so it's a recommendation as a parent panel. And so we technically did not have to vote on it is what I had shared with them. But since we had already kind of started out down that path, we had um, just wanted to make sure in good faith that what we had presented to you at the initial SHAC meeting went ahead and wanted to bring it back to the group. We learned a lot of great things. Actually, we had um, we even had technology come for the future process of this. We couldn't turn it around overnight, but a way to expedite all of this. And in good faith and transparency, um, whether we vote on things or not, what we're trying to do here is along with our parent group, create the intent of what represents the values of our district. So I just wanted just yes. to make sure everybody understood that. Um, not just because we don't vote on something doesn't mean we're not going to represent in our school district the right thing of what this committee is trying to help us to do. But again, we brought it forth to the committee. Is that what you're sharing, Ms. Be what you wanted me to share, Ms. Ms. Beer? Yes, that's that's exactly um, you know what I was thinking about with your comments at the meeting. I thought they were really important, and rather than paraphrase, I thought it'd be great just to have it from you. Um, but uh, I think the partnership that we're aiming to build um, with the community is just really important um, that people hear and see that we are acting in the most transparent way possible, um, so that we can build the best programs for our students. I mean, that's what we're here for is a heart for the students, and so. Um, I just, I, I guess I just can't underscore that enough. And I, I really appreciated that comment that you had shared. So I just wanted you to, to bring that out. Thank you. Okay, um, anything else on the forms? So I don't think in, in that that spirit, um, Dr. Upshaw, we do not vote on these. We just, everyone's in agreement and these are the recommended forms. Is that what you're understanding as well, Mr. Haymark? Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right. So. If anybody else has other comments or feedback, please send them our way. Um, but we really appreciate everyone's effort on this um, 
to help get things more transparent and in line. All right, um, the next agenda item, number four, um, call for input regarding the sharing of member email addresses. Um, the Texas DSHS manual, it's already been referred to in the meeting. It actually encourages um, there to be a, an email directory of, of members of the SHAC. Um, this email directory would not be something that goes is made public. It's just a way for uh, members to be able to be connected, um, you know, as, as, a, as a group. Um, so if you would like to be part of that, then um, we are happy to put it together. If you do not, we will respectfully um, decline it too. Um, but I just was trying to figure out ways to get us better connected as a group um, so we can share ideas. Um, but again, the whatever emails are just are sent or shared would be kept um, within the realm of the SHAC um, committee. Um, they would not be made public. And then um, if you do not want to be part of it, that is okay too. So I just... Um, Wanted to put that out there to see what you guys' opinions and thoughts were with that um, in terms of trying to help get people plugged in. This is April. I'm supportive of sharing emails. I am too. I agree. This is Dr. Haynes. Perfect. Um, it's not really an item, I guess, that we will vote on, but um, unless everybody is, is unanimous and we'll put it together, if not, um, we can send a follow-up email and um, people can reply back, yes, include me, don't include me. Um, does that sound reasonable? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, agenda item number five, examine curriculum review procedures. Um, this item is on the, the agenda because there's concern of noncompliance with the Health One um, sexuality PowerPoint presentation. At the 11 October meeting, um, parents brought forth a concern, myself included, about um, the PowerPoint presentation not um, really putting the weight on abstinence that 28.004 is asking to be put on. And then there are some other procedural things that um, given the language of 28004 may or may not have happened. And so I think it's worth um, revisiting our processes for um, curriculum that we approve as a shack and making sure that we are lining up with exactly what, what we're asking, we're being asked to do. And that when parents come forward and ask, you know, has this made the two public meetings? Has this made this? We can very firmly say, yes, these things happen on this date and this date. This was the access. This is how this process worked. Um, and right now, I think that's a little bit muddy, um, just in my own um, research efforts. And then my concerns as a parent with that presentation, not really focusing on abstinence primarily as dictated through 28004. Um, and so I, I bring this forward as a concern and ask for this agenda item specifically so that we can look at the curriculum review to make sure we are doing it in line with what the state is asking us to do as a SHAC committee. Um, so it, I welcome any feedback um, about that, um, and it sort of very nicely leads into the next um, agenda item six. Um, so whatever, you, if you guys have any comments or thoughts or similar concerns, please share them. Well, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of new people on Shack, and, and maybe there's a lot of people that have been on there before, but I think, I think we all want to do things the right way so you know i welcome i welcome exploring that and i think i think we all want the same thing miss bear do you, you guys have any kind of um suggestions to add to uh add that little extra weight to it that you're talking about yes sir i am um, i did i had a there's a slide that has it's directly from the good heart wilcox text because i know um you know our our latitude with adding um, additional language to that is limited to the previously approved, um, you know, curriculum materials. And so um, there is a slide directly out of the um, Goodhart Wilcox text that shows the benefits of abstinence. Um, and it, it, it very, it's, I mean, it's, it's an image right from the book. It would be easy to add the slide in to that section on abstinence. Um, there's other, some, some other, um, uh, I think updating that could be done because if you actually compare the graphics that are used in that that PowerPoint presentation, they're they're not quite the current version of the text we have. And so um, that one, you know, I and I think Dr. Haynes 
uh, not to call her out either, but as physicians, I think we like um, anatomical pictures to be more like anatomy and not less like cartoons. Yes. Um, and so, <laughs> and so um, I would suggest that those pictures get updated as well. But that's beyond the scope of the concern with the legal side of it. I think from the legal side of it, we could very easily um, improve the weight in, in that area with, with minimal changes. So I think that would be easy to do. Um, does that answer your question? It does. I just, um, I believe at the last meeting, Wade, did we approve the curriculum? Is that correct? Which included the slideshow. And if that, and if we did, this should be a, would this be an amendment to that? Because I'm not against this at all. I think it's probably something that we could look at. I just want to make sure it's shovel ready because we're about to hit Thanksgiving break and this particular unit is about to be taught. So I would definitely want uh, any updates that, that are out there to be done as soon as we could. Yeah, well, and I think, Mr. Dahl, to your point that this is, you know, the curriculum, um, the way that it's a, that it has been currently approved um, is, is as consistent with the Goodhart Wilcox text that's, that is at present. So when I think about making revisions and addendums or changes to that, um, they really are with keeping in the nature of what has already been approved, which I think is, is positive for your question. Um, you and yeah, you know, and those changes aren't, wouldn't substantially um, change the content of the presentation in terms of we're going offline and or, or out, out of lines for what we're expected to do. It just enhances our compliance, in my opinion. But I, yeah, that's I, the, was the yeah that's the point it, of the of the call because I think we need to look at it. Yeah, uh, having taught health back in the day, I, I think that's a, a I like the idea of, of balancing that weight and adding that extra layer to the abstinence side of it. Wade, how what would be the process to go about having that added if we did that? But we'd have to be sure, and I, I know Dr. Spear, I've seen this slide, the only, only the problem that we, that we might that we run into is that the slide that you refer to is not in the in the companion piece. It's in the text that's online that Goodall Wilcox has released, but that's not the, the, the piece that we have adopted in the district. So, and I, and I agree with you, but I've seen, I've seen your slide and, I, and the pieces of it, but it's just, we wanna be sure that we give the teachers some levity also in creating uh, the lessons. And that's a different, I think part of the problem that we have is just the language, the academic language, you know, what is a, what's the curriculum what's the what's the instructional resource what is the lesson and how does that support the curriculum so i think if and again so calling a subcommittee to review those things is definitely going to be something we need to have but i think once we have clarity on the language it'll help also when we do amend uh the resource as far as the legal aspect too that's going to help also what what role do we play legally you know in uh, approving a lesson versus approving a curriculum whatever else those kind of those type of uh, topics so Wade, can you help me understand maybe something that you had just said? So we just got done approving opt-in forms and we were very specific about what was gonna be presented on the subject of human sexuality. But then I just also heard you say um, that we wanna give the teachers latitude in how they teach it. And so I wanna be clear that no, what we just said in the opt-in forms it. was that we were going to have materials on the website that everyone could see. And that was the only topics to be discussed or taught the only instructional materials for students. So can you help explain? Shaq, yeah, we can recommend additions to the curriculum instructional resource, but the teachers are the ones that will create the lessons. And then that comes back to the Shaq. So whatever Dr. Spears mentioned, you know, adding on to that, that piece, the teachers could look into it and see how it best fits. And then the whole thing comes back to the Shaq for final approval. So uh, all, if y'all need, all... need a, I'm sorry, if y'all need a, a a group of teachers, uh, I'll volunteer Knox. <laughs> Wait, can it just does it have to be every health teacher? Can it be a a, a certain segment of teachers? No, that this is we we had a team of health teachers from around the district that helped create the the the, the lesson in the first place, so we could have a team from around the district. Okay, I'll, I'll volunteer some of my Knox folks too. If you want them? <laughs> So moving Fair forward with this, if that's going to happen and they want to look at, at Ms. Spears' slide that she has uh, with the, adding that extra layer to the abstinence piece, we what's the turnaround time of saying, okay, we're going to get this to them and then they're going to get it right back to the committee? I mean, I would think we would do that before our next formal chat committee, right? Yes, that would be the goal. I mean, we moved pretty quickly on the consent forms. Um, I know y'all. I'm new to most of y'all here, but I am a like a get it done kind of person. So <laughs> I will move very expeditiously. And I do think, you know, 
I don't want to be disrespectful at all to the teachers or what they're doing, but if we if we do the you know the groundwork and the legwork for it where it's formatted and it's easy, you know I think that just offloads the teachers quite a bit, and um you know and if we're acting in accordance with what the law says and with what the textbooks are you know what we've already approved to teach from, I I don't see that that would be you know too much of of an ask. It may be more of where the teachers are approving or advising, you know, oh, this, I don't, this might be difficult, um, you know, to teach the way that this is worded and, and those kind of feedback. But I don't think the ask is for the teachers to, you know, to start from scratch and go over it again. And, and it's not really fair, I don't think, for, the, for us to ask the teachers, hey, why don't you try to guess what we think is non-compliant in here? You know, I don't think that that's a fair, a fair ask either. So if we are very direct in saying, Look, if we make these minor changes, this we think this would be in compliance. Can you please let us know from your expertise what you think about it? And then that that back and forth um, relationship is massaged and really cooperative to the to the highest potential, I would think. Um, but that that was my thought process with it. Speaking as a classroom teacher who has taught um, middle school, junior high. It's not easy. It's not easy to present this subject. It's you go in with the mindset that you do the best that you can. Um, I'm a parent, and it, I think we need to have um, Wade's team of the health teachers in there. That's like going in your doctor's office. That's like going in your classroom. We we want them to be a collaborative part. And, and regarding the sex education, human trafficking, all of those things, it's not for the parents that are advocating and they're all in. It's for our parents that we need to support that may not feel comfortable speaking to their children about this. I had friends that parents didn't want to talk, didn't know how, didn't have the resources. And as a teacher, I had parents coming to me and saying, I don't know what to do. So I guess my lens is let's make sure that we're not only including the parents that have strong feelings and want to speak to their children, which is perfect, but also support the parents, families, grandparents supporting their grandchildren or raising their grandchildren that may not have the faculties or the resources. So I think we do need to have the teachers on board and I don't think anybody wants to be told um, this is what we recommend that you teach based on this. I think we want to have this as a collaborative, um, supportive, all-encompassing, um, because it's not easy to do it. I'm just telling you right now, it's just not. And especially when you have more than 20 kids and they're a bunch of seventh grade um, girls or boys, it's not easy. So I do think we need to have the teachers, the health teachers, whoever is in this district. I have not taught in this district, but um, I think that's really important. And then to support resources and information for families that don't know how or, or are struggling with to explain these topics to their children to make sure they're healthy for lifelong. Yeah, that, that was great input on this one. It seems it's pretty straightforward. Once again, having taught it, the easier portions to teach, or not, I wouldn't say easier, nothing's ever easy about teaching, but the, uh, the benefits of abstinence is a lot less uncomfortable than the other stuff that we teach. So I don't know that, I think this could be a pretty quick turnaround. If you, Bryce Spear, Miss Spear, I'm sorry. If you, oh, it's fine. If Bryce you is fine. That, I'm sorry, <laughs> Dr. Spear. There, I'm no, go. no, please. Bryce is fine. <laughs> But if you'll shoot that to Wade and we can get it to those teachers on this particular piece, I think is pretty straightforward and it'll be uh, gladly accepted by it. I'm just speaking on what I think our teachers will say. But once again, time is of the essence. So if we're going to do it, uh, you said you're a go-getter. Wade, yeah. if we could get our hands on that info and get that to those teachers by that next chat committee, uh, I don't see any, I don't see where we would be out of order asking to show the benefits of abstinence. That's a, a the better part of the teaching process with this particular unit. Okay, we'll take care of it. Thank you, Mr. Dahl. I appreciate that. Hey, hey Wade, um, if I could ask a question, Dr. Spear, um, your earlier comments, I'm just, I'm a little confused. So, um, so we, we provide this recommendation, these power, or, you know, you did, you created it, the SHAC committee looked at it, 
the teachers are going to have it, but they don't have to use these slides. Did I, did, did I hear that correctly? Or like they could do other materials from the Goodhart Wilcox book or did I understand that correctly what you said or did I misunderstand that? No, they have to teach the slides. I think what I was referring to, Dr. Spear mentioned the legal aspects of it. Like what, what role does the shack play in the legal aspects of uh, curriculum and when it comes to curriculum resource, instructional resources or lessons? And so that was what I was referring to. And I think what I was with the, with the slides is we want to make sure that we're clear on where the, the information is coming from. We want to make sure it comes from an approved source that we do have in the district. So Goodhart Wilcox has released a text online that's the entire textbook all in one. That includes the human sexuality piece. But in Conroe, we have, it's separate. We have the human sexuality pieces in a companion piece we purchased separately. And that is where the information came from. It's not in that whole text. And so when students go online to do their textbook in Conroe ISD, they don't have access to that material. They have to use a companion text. And in our case, the teachers have it as a slideshow from the companion piece. If that Wait. makes sense. Can I ask just for clarity on something to make sure um, have whatever slide uh, Dr. Spear is, have, we need to make sure to check it that it is what's in the companion piece. Because um, the whole book as a whole, when it was on the State Board of Education list, it was removed from the State Board of as an education list. And that's the book that I think that is online right now. Yes. And then they had us, they, they went, had to go back and then give us another book to which was separate. I just want to make sure that what we adopted represents exactly what's on the slide on the slideshow. It probably maybe it does. Maybe they just separated the, the companion, but I just want to make sure because that was something that did happen at the state board. They paused that book that's online and then they had uh, what we adopted is not what's on the, the book online. That's correct. Okay. Any other comments? Um, we can I can send the slide out. Wade has it too right now. Um, I can send the slide out so everyone can see it. Um, and then we all have access to the online textbook. Um, the companion text, I do not believe is available through any links publicly anywhere. So I think the only way a parent can access that book is to purchase it um, through the district um, at the district price. You actually can contact Goodhart Wilcox. I, I worked that route. It does work. Um, I have tried it, so we are not giving advice to our parents that doesn't work. And um, or they can you can go to your um, local administrative office of your school or the administrative district office to take a look to for any concerns about the compliance with that part. Um, OK, so moving on to our last agenda item is a call for subcommittees. Um, our current bylaws show that we have a membership um, subcommittee and we have a physical activity and health. It might be paraphrasing it incorrectly, um, a physical activity and um, health uh, committee subcommittee as well. And so um, given the work that I think that needs to be done, um, I would propose that we also continue as, or be, re, restart the bylaw subcommittee um, and then a compliance committee so that questions like this about curriculum and what's the proper procedure in order to follow so we can maintain that transparency and accountability with the community are very easy for the committee. So we would bring our total subcommittees up to four. It's a volunteer basis. Um, if anyone else has another committee that you think would be well suited given the topics discussed or if there's a topic that you want uh, you know, to dig into, um, and bring a friend of the committee to, to do, we can do that too. But I wanted to open that up for discussion because um, there's a lot of work to be done. And um, I think it's better the more, voice, the more voices we have available to help um, you know, contribute opinions and, and be consistent. I, I am an educator, a parent, as I've shared. Um, I'm interested in staff wellness for our teachers. I'm concerned about our students' social emotional wellness. Um, I've said on consortiums, councils, committees, um, that is where my heart is. And those are where my concerns are. Um, I have taught sex education, health education, PE teacher, classroom teacher. Um, but those are the things that are really speaking to me and where I would think that my time is best suited. Um, 
as Wade had sent this out, this committee was supposed to just be meeting as like a quarterly basis. Um, but I'm happy to support with school wellness, a school wellness policy. Um, I think our staff needs support. I think our students are under enormous amount of pressure, be it social media, the world that we're living, um, academic pressure. Um, and, and that's where I think I'm going to divert and, and have my energies go to. I think that's great. I think that's a great, a great thing, a great subcommittee to start um, for sure. So we'll add that to the list. Um, um, do you want to go ahead and head that one up? Um, not to put you on the spot, or do you want to think about it? And then you can... Um, yeah, I can deflect okay. and, and talk to Wade, but I think I'm going to pause on my email being released until we kind of have that going. I think a lot of our energies need to, to button all of this that we have out. Mm -hmm. And so I think Wade has been on this committee and, and I'll probably deflect and get some feedback from him. If there's someone that's interested in, I'd like to have him funnel that or, or if you want to funnel that, but I, I don't want to start something else as we have so many irons in the fire right now. Um, yes, there's a lot of work to do. But I don't want to divert, but I do, I am very concerned about social emotional learning and um, um, want to support our teachers and staff wellness. And um, there are frontline defense, defenders, just like our doctors and nurses, our firemen, our police. But we really, I, I just really think that that, something that we need and this is why I joined the committee is to support school wellness and have that and unite our our community partners into that as well okay so Bryce as far as subcommittees is the next step to perhaps whenever um the summary from this meeting is sent out. I think there was a, several things um, like the amended minutes, for example, the request for emails. Do we also just for those folks who aren't on the call today, do we want to put out a call and just ask who's interested in what subcommittees? Yes, I think that is I think that's the most inclusive way to proceed. So we'll put out a summary, um, you know, a summary email and we can do the draft the draft minutes on the email um, so people are aware um, and then just like we're talking about here, the call for subcommittees. And I don't know that, um, you know, anybody can participate at any time. We all are busy individuals um, with busy work lives, busy family lives. Um, and so I think in order to best utilize the the energy that comes forward, I think we leave that open where people can come, hey, I can I can start working on this and um, and jump in at, at any time. So yes, it will go into an email. We'll put the, um, so far I have, um, you know, bylaw membership compliance and then physical um, activity and fitness. Um, and then given Mrs. Musante's comments, I think we're holding on the staff wellness for a minute until we sort of tuck in these other concerns. Um, you but it, if other- You could put it in. I just, wait, do you have any input on that? Because I think it's really important that we not only have parent support, but that we have our educators support. Um, we want the shack to be something that they embrace and, and they're like, yeah, you know, it, 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 just speaking as a teacher, you want to, you want to have that as a collaborative partner. Has there been any talk weighed about staff wellness the past couple of years, social emotional learning, um, school wellness policy, has any of that verbiage been out? Muted. Sorry about that. Uh, we do have staff staff wellness uh, uh, plans in place. You know, we have like a basically it's like an initiative across the district. We usually do one in the fall and the spring uh, where staffs can participate, and they do. It's an award based type program to encourage staff members to get out and be more active, be more physical, walking activities, things like this. And they have challenges associated with them. Uh, we do have a wellness fair that we conduct every year in January for our, for our district staff members, and we do. Uh, you know, uh, blood work and uh, mammograms and things like that. So we do have opportunities, but I see what you're saying as a partnership with the shack. I think we definitely could. I think it'd be important just, to kind of make the shack aware of what we already have in place and then see what your suggestions are and see how we can coordinate together with that. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I would, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. I would also. I was going to say, from a from a school standpoint, we do work on some of those things. We do have avenues for teachers to reach out for for their emotional well being. Of course, we do with the students as well. But that might be something we partner with our district council, district level counselors with as well. I can see uh, uh, Manuel Texador type person helping with that. One of our district crisis counselors. So just the one that's out there already. Yeah, <laughs> is this school counseling for the district for Conroe? Are they invited to shock and be a part of this dialogue i and i appreciate the fair and the but i just mean resources and things to help their um emotional health but also our students um i mean i, I i'm fine with it if i maybe wade you can plug me into those areas and maybe i can represent and and see how best i can help with that yeah absolutely so I've been working with school wellness policies and supporting um, teachers, staff, students, you know, parents and families with our community stakeholders. So um, we can put it on there and see if there's anybody interested. And, and I don't know if it's anything about sharing as much as getting dialogue um, that we just really want to have resources for um, supporting at this time. There's a lot of stress um, post pandemic that people are still feeling. And I just want to honor that and, and give them space to know they're supported. Can I add one suggestion if, uh, you know, for as far as if you want to bring in um, like, you know, experts or not experts, but maybe just like a different voice, maybe that would help with that. Of course, they wouldn't be a voting member, but our HR department has a strong um, presence in that um, piece with um, on the employee side of um, those initiatives. So if y'all were gonna form a subcommittee, just a, a thought that you might want somebody from HR to participate. Thank you. I, I just know that teachers are looking to move out Teachers are looking to retire. Teachers are looking for other things. And we really want them to know that we're there to support them. And teachers care about our students. And they try their best every day. But just like in every profession, you know, everybody's tugged different ways. And so I do want them to know that we appreciate um, them helping us with our children for lifelong learners. A thousand percent agree with you. I think that um, the teachers are just a precious resource and, you know, we can't not address anything that's causing burnout or fatigue um, with that group. I know from the physician side of the house that um, when you look, when we look at burnout rates um, and wellness of medical professionals that, um, you know, institutions tend to um, assume that it's a resilience issue with the individual. And I think if there's any message to take home um, about wellness and um, and health of professional people, it is not about resilience. When you have people going in day in and day out and um, you're really trying to do their best and shape and mold young people, um, the hearts are there and making sure that we have the districts and district administrative support to grow and address the needs that are present with our, our most precious resource. So um, I, I agree. I think we need to, to move forward on this. So thank you. Any other comments or concerns, thoughts? Okay, well, on that note, uh, Mr. Haymark, do you have any other closing comments or should we call for the meeting to be adjourned? I Bryce, have what, sorry, I do have one other thing. When we um, send this out for people to add to those um, committees, um, do, do the other two that we have, the membership and physical activity committee, are mm -hmm. we going to ask people if they want to join those as well? Or do we already have standing, do we already have committees in place for the membership then? Yeah, that's a great question, Christina. To my knowledge, there's no um, there's no standing committees um, that were present at the start of this SHAC year. Those two committees are delineated from our bylaws that the SHAC must have a membership committee and must have the physical activity and fitness committee. But um, the membership on those committees are, are open every year um, or sure through um, 
the Robert's rules, I believe. Um, we don't have any parliamentary authority in our bylaws to say otherwise. So those those meetings or those committee meetings um, should be open to anybody who wants to join the committee. Two things really quick. I just want to thank Wade for his poise um, throughout this collaboratory process. It is not easy. I have never been in 20 years of education on a district meeting committee consortium that doesn't have a district representative ever. There's always some type of district representative because it's covered under the district um, and to be um, the conduit to whoever appoints him. And I don't know if that's the superintendent or, or I don't know what the, the um, overarching entity of that is. And, um, but I do thank him for that. Um, it is not easy. Um, teaching is not easy and teaching sensitive subjects in this day and age is not easy. And, and educators know that. And so um, I think we just need to be mindful and, and understand that it's not easy to be a parent and it's not easy to be a teacher and it's not easy to be, um, have your student in the district and, and, and know that you're trying to do your best job. And I think we just need to make sure that the shock is a partner with our educators, with our staff members. And we wanna put that, um, our students come first that we're all in it for the greater good. So thank you. Thank you. Bryce, right. one other comment real quick before we wrap up. So um, the at the very beginning when we were doing approval of the minutes from the October meeting, will those amended minutes be sent out um, with the email that has the current minutes as well as email requests and call for subcommittees. Will all that be in one communication? Um, it should be. And the only caveat would be um, if the information, you know, if there's, I don't want to, we don't want to bombard y'all with email. Um, so if, if it's preferable to have one email with everything in it, we can do it that way. I just don't want to delay um, information transmission if something comes forward, because technically the minutes from this meeting have 10 days to be prepared. So um, that would put, if I put everything in one email, then that would mean that we don't start um, enlisting membership from these subcommittees or putting that information out. And I think that that is um, prudent to get moving on sooner than later um, so we can get to work. Um, Agree so, with you. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't limit us to what, I guess what I was trying to say is we will have two sets of minutes going out, right? Amended from October, as well as today's. Yes, that's correct. Sounds good. Hey, Bryce, real quick. Yes. I missed um, the subcommittees that you would like to suggest. Sure. Those two, one was, um, can you repeat yeah. those? So the, um, the, the membership committee and the physical activity and fitness committee, those are two that, um, that are in the bylaws that we, um, we have to have a um, subcommittees. I keep saying committee, I mean subcommittee. Um, and then the other two, I would suggest we um, we utilize are a bylaw subcommittee and a compliance subcommittee. Okay, thank so, you. I was yeah. right. I wrote them down as one, so I was getting sure. Confused. All right. Yeah. No problem. Thank you so much. All right. So on that note. Um, Anything else? Last going, going, gone. Okay. Um, so we'll motion to adjourn the, the meeting at 219. Make anyone want to make the motion? I move that we adjourn the meeting. Second. I second. April. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so meeting adjourned and we will um, communicate by email. Uh, currently our next SHAC meeting is scheduled for January. I can't think of the exact date. Wade, can you help me out on the exact date for January? 24th. January 24th, perfect. Um, so we will see y'all in, Jan in January and then um, watch your email too. And if you have anything, feedback at all, please email. Um, we're always happy to listen and, and bring forth concerns. Thank you so much for your time today.